The Generation Starship is a huge, rather slow spacecraft that is also known as the Interstellar Arc. It is its own kind of alternative to spaceships that fly at much higher speeds and have traditional crews. But just how realistic is this? And will the time come when mankind will accomplish these kinds of voyages in real life? This is a really interesting question that people asked back in the old days. Well, for this kind of a voyage, we will need a huge space arc. Because over the time of the journey, several generations will have to take turns in the ship. Plus, there should be a lot of settlers on board. Or else, genetic diseases will be inevitable. In addition, as a safeguard, a catastrophic event must be factored in. For example, the ship being hit by a meteorite, or even a grain of sand. Then most likely a powerful explosion would be unavoidable, the consequences of which might be fatal to the mission. But let's say we came up with a good shield and radiator, which will be located in front of the ship, and will remove the heat by radiating it out into space. In order to continue the mission, we will also have to disregard its size, because most likely, in order to lift the shields and the radiator off the ground together with the ship, incredibly huge fuel tanks will have to be constructed. Of course, one can't ignore the possibility of having an epidemic on board, which at some point will reduce the population of the colonizers by 30%. Taking all these factors into account, according to researchers' most conservative and modest estimates, the group of colonizers should initially consist of 98 people. Besides, each of the 49 married couples should, to begin with, be selected by DNA analysis in order to ensure maximum genetic diversity. If a smaller crew were to set out on the voyage, the success of the mission would already be in question. For example, the chances of survival for 25 married couples is already estimated at about 50%. And if there are only 32 or even fewer settlers, the odds leave them no chance at all, 0%. Perhaps the descendants of the original crew will reach Proxima Centauri, but by that time, they will no longer be able to establish a sustainable colony. But this poses the question, but what if we use cryonics or suspended animation? This is a type of hibernation that can be beneficial in helping the travelers to conserve emotional resources and avoid burnout. It is possible, but not for long. In fact, for much shorter than we think, since this sort of hibernation carries risks, even if people go into it for several months and not years. The consequences may not be reversible, and from what was a strong team, all that will remain will be exhausted and depressed travelers. Therefore, we're back to the old scenario. So having left the Earth behind, the 98 space travelers will give birth to children and they to grandchildren, even during the lifetime of the first generation. So judging by the calculations, the maximum population on the Ark could reach 500 people. And this means that the colonists will have to provide themselves with food on their own. In other words, grow it directly on board the ship. But how much food do they need? After all, the size of the ship depends on this and therefore the energy required to move it. These calculations require taking not only the size of the crew into account, but also the average age of the spaceship's inhabitants, their height, weight, and level of physical activity. 
in order to understand how many calories they will each need annually. If the ship is constructed in the form of a rotating cylinder so that the centrifugal force provides artificial gravity, then the height of the agricultural compartment should be 320 meters with a radius of 224 meters. Add to this the cruise quarters, the common areas such as a dining room, a gym or a medical unit, the flight control rooms, the power generators and the engines, and the size of the spaceship will approximately double in size. The space arc will be approximately 650 meters long and 450 meters in diameter. Almost half a million liters of portable water will be required. But we have circulation that runs around the ship, so everything works. Keep in mind that our flight is very long. And yes, most likely we personally will not be able to reach our star with the speed indicated in the task. More precisely, it will be possible to get there, but it will take about 500 years. Of course, it is possible that fewer psychological problems will arise for the subsequent generations who will have been born on the ship. Inside, there is an entire world. There are 24 habitats, each with its own unique flora, fauna and weather conditions. Hundreds of people will have been born and died during the journey. Now there are about 2,000 inhabitants. For them, the ship has been their home all their lives. But very soon, this will change. The ship has begun to decelerate and it will take a mere 10 years to reach the destination. Ahead is a new world, a new planet, a new hope for mankind. And perhaps during the time while the colonists were on their way, the planet became habitable. Who knows? Who knows? As you can see, we had to disregard some things and violate a lot of others. Interstellar journeys are still a fantasy for us. But what kind of fantasy doesn't become reality after a while?